There's a major uh, development in the South China Sea in the way of uh, offshore uh, oil exploration. Uh, we already have some Oklahoma firms that are currently uh, selling to that marketplace, and we anticipate there's going to be additional Oklahoma firms that will become uh, eligible to uh, sell their products uh, in that marketplace. We know it's not the only source, but it is the main source for this area and one of the main sources for the entire state of Oklahoma. PCP has gotten in the last several years to be a very popular drug of abuse, particularly in the lower socioeconomic group and class of Oklahoma City. has been a concern that this was a transfusion associated case and it definitely was not. The person, however, that died uh, did not fall into any of the four high-risk categories, namely being a homosexual man, a, an intravenous drug abuser, a Haitian, or a hemophiliac. He did not fit into any of those categories. So the mechanism or manner by which he acquired AIDS is unknown. Those elect to and constituting house represent, I declare the bill to pass. Does that have a merger? We have an ongoing program of consolidating uh, certain uh, constituent houses in the Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Lynn. The room was full of medical people and charity organizations, and those at the front table were full of stories of deteriorating health, waiting lists hundreds of names long, and medical bills totaling thousands of dollars. We've talked to our insurance company. So far they've said no, that they will not pay for anything because it's exploratory. I mean, it's an experimental procedure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just waiting to see. Uh, initially, we thought that we would be able to get a uh, kidney from my mother, and we planned on that for the first year. And then about a month ago, I was called up to uh, the hospital in Oklahoma City with a possible cadaver kidney. In both instances, uh, the transplant was called off in the, in the very last moment. Physicians specializing in organ transplant testified that the real weakness in the current system is a shortage of organs. Congress is considering legislation right now to try and improve the system. That legislation would set up a task force to look at the National Organ Transplant Network. It would develop a registry to list potential donors and recipients. It would also provide grants to assist in organ retrieval. And finally, the legislation would prohibit any buying and selling of organs. All of today's testimony will be taken back to Washington and play a part in that legislation. Terry Cook, News 4. There were 
55 entrants, one came all the way from Dallas to win a $1,000 first prize and $500 second prize. The Boy George Lookalike contest was sponsored by KOFM Radio and held in the center of Crossroads Mall. The entrants had spent literally hours in preparation to become Boy George, outrageous clothes, the makeup and hair Boy George is so noted for. But it wasn't just a lookalike contest, you had to lip sync one of his songs. Many times the likeness was lip perfect. Finally, MC Mike Canale announced the finalists to a standing room only crowd. Michael Jones. There were girls and boys in the finals, and a boy won, 23-year-old Michael Jones from Oklahoma City. As he made his encore singing It's a Miracle, he really believed it. Well, I don't think so, Sam. We haven't had any product deal because we've just reached this decision recently. We feel that this is uh, what needs to be done in order for us to be able to adjourn sine die, and uh, the plan is that uh, we will get this bill ready to go, passed today, and we will adjourn today. Thirty years ago, a young black Oklahoma City police officer walked this beat on 2nd Street between Walnut and Geary. He would later go on to become the city's highest ranking black officer, but he would never forget his beginnings. Good morning, Judy. Good morning, Chief. This week, Assistant Police Chief Gerald Emmett is calling it quits. Emmett has been in the Chief's office for the last ten years. His fondest memories are the department of the 1960s, when he made instrumental changes in the juvenile division. Chief Emmett says the early days are still very vivid. I can see extremely vividly the um, the first day I walked the beat and uh, the pride that I felt wearing that uniform and, and being part of Oklahoma City's finest, you know. In the last 30 years, Chief Emmett has seen a lot of changes in the department and in himself. He says he had no intention in 1954 to make law enforcement a career and recalls how racial lines once separated officers. He had a a police unit out there was driven by black officers and only by black officers. If it was down, or if there were no black officers present, that unit stayed, stayed uh, immobile. And uh, a white officer simply did not drive the car that the black officer drove. That's how far it reached. If there was an equal opportunity offered to anyone, that there would be, there would be hardly any, any noticeable difference as far as the activities of the partner was concerned. No, I, I think that uh, I was privileged to be a part of that transition. Ed Stewart, News 4.
Exhausted would be an accurate word to describe the mood in the 39th legislature. Stubborn describes the posture of some of the senators. When today's session began, funding for prisons, flood victims, and schools was still up in the air. Yes, it's true that perhaps something could have been done, but it wasn't. It didn't happen that way. And I'm not going to shut down state government because I didn't get my way. And I would hope, Senator Schott, that you would not want to consider the same either. After heated debate, an omnibus bill which covers schools and prisons passed the Senate, but the emergency clause to immediately enact the funding failed. That sent rumors of a special session flying down the halls of the Capitol. But even after that emergency clause failed, one powerful senator was not convinced that it was over. In fact, Senate Leader Marvin York is convinced that the funding measures can be enacted immediately with or without the emergency clause. But that is the provision that I'm relying upon that uh, tells me that there is at least some possibility, and I think a good one, that uh, we can pass this omnibus appropriations bill without the emergency and it will have the full force and effect of law immediately upon the signing of it by the governor. So the lawmakers go back to work in the morning, first to reconsider the emergency clause, and then hopefully and finally to consider adjournment. Dan Slocum, News 4 at the State Capitol. This morning was spent discussing the technicalities of foreign exchange service. Simply put, foreign exchange gave customers outside the Oklahoma City area a chance to call the city extensively without having to pay long distance charges. The system was heavily relied upon by small businesses, but since the vestiture of AT&T, those rates have gone up, in some cases 700 percent. We could lose uh, uh, bank deposits, uh, people moving out of town, businesses moving out of town, loss of jobs. It has a, a rippling effect, uh, basically, that, that is far-reaching, you know, uh, other than just the line user itself. The service has always been subsidized, and if a job is, be, is in place and as a result of a subsidized service, then somebody, and in this case it was all the Oklahoma ratepayers, were subsidizing a particular job. Now, the unfortunate thing is that the rate increase is so dramatic that it is going to have a severe impact on a lot of people. And hopefully we can come up with some solution out of these hearings that helps alleviate some of the problems. One proposal already put on the table has been rejected in theory by foreign exchange customers. The battle will continue in the Corporation Commission courtroom through tomorrow. Kevin Ogle, News 4. So you're going to get the fly too, huh? Yeah. That's going to be nice. We're halfway there, we'll kick them out. Oh. <laughs> no, we're not hey, either. get a parachute. Robo Take a parachute. The this will push you out, okay? <laughs> we'll come and pick you up. But I hear this jet is really nice. It's a, they tell me it's a, something like a 10-passenger private jet, oil company executive. One high-ranking law enforcement official says he already sees similarities in the possible cases against Walker and that of so-called serial killers who have murdered in Oklahoma. The most famous has been Henry Lee Lucas, who now admits he may have been involved in more than 300 murders across the country. With companion Otis Toole, Lucas moved through Oklahoma, and officials are still trying to determine how many Oklahoma murders Lucas may be responsible for. Then, just months ago, there was Christopher Wilder, 
the former race car driver, is believed to have abducted Wendy Logan of Oklahoma City outside of Penn Square Mall. She was found stabbed to death in Kansas. The FBI's top agent in Oklahoma City says he sees similarities with Lucas, Tool, and Wilder and the possible charges against Walker. Serial killers, he says, are the most difficult for police to catch. Their victims are picked at random with no motive except the need to kill. In most cases, they are extremely unpredictable. Uh, we cannot virtually predict uh, where they're going to. We can guess. Uh, we can put out the information to all law enforcement agencies, and, and eventually, uh, we know eventually that they're, you know, we're going we're gonna to get them. But uh, the unpredictability is, is what, uh, what we cannot, uh, you know, we just can't count on him doing a certain thing at a certain time. And Daniel says he doesn't know why there have been so many serial killings so recently. Meanwhile, law enforcement authorities from around the state are waiting to talk to Walker to see if he can be tied to other unsolved state murders. Jeff Fowler, News 4. Well, apparently there, there are some surprises for the uh, proponents because they're telling us that law enforcement is in it and there's no law enforcement here. They're telling us that taxes are in it and there are no taxes in it. It, it uh, simply describes how any taxes, if collected, are to be distributed. Uh, and incidentally, uh, in the distribution of any taxes levied, if they should be levied on liquor by the drink, there is no tax in the proposal for the county or the city. It provides that any tax will be divided 3% to the tax commission and the rest to the state general revenue fund. More than 100 Oklahomans left for Nashville today aboard a chartered 727 nonstop flight. They were all friends and colleagues of Edward Gaylord. Since Mr. Gaylord is being honored by the U.S. Olympic Committee, it was only fitting that those associated with athletics make the trip, like OU football coach Barry Switzer. And there were other notables on the plane, former Mayor Patience Ladding, numerous civic leaders such as Bill Swisher with the Chamber of Commerce, OSU President Dr. Lawrence Boger, State Representative Cleta Dethridge Mitchell and her new husband, Dale Mitchell. Dean Crakehill with the National Cowboy Hall of Fame. Chamber of Commerce President Ed Cook talked about the trip's significance. I think uh, something along this line is really a very outstanding thing to have happened to Oklahoma City, particularly as far as Opryland itself is concerned. The fact that we're all going, we have the opportunity to see Opryland and to be with Mr. Gaylord for such a prestigious affair. As the Oklahomans arrived, they were greeted by Mr. Gaylord's longtime secretary, Phyllis Clark. Mr. Gaylord was not on this flight. He arrived a couple of days earlier in Nashville to get ready for the extravaganza. And what an exciting gala it will be. The city of Nashville is calling this event the most spectacular in the city's history. As the more than 1,000 people dine on lobster and pastry shells, they will see the man from Oklahoma receive this national and most prestigious award. Bellashaw, News 4 in Nashville. Sometime around 7 or 8 o'clock this morning, the wind changed and ignited the fumes out of the other tank and exploded it and then the whole thing went up and had another explosion about 9 o'clock, 9.30, something like that and this morning. blew one of those tanks over about 100 yards. Then. 400 feet. They stepped it off 400 feet over there.
These guys, the McCain brothers, Ben and Butch, have a morning show on KTVY in Oklahoma City. I'm going to be with them tonight and all day tomorrow down there. They come on the air the same time we do in the morning. They get a 48 share, largest rating in Oklahoma, and they help to give the Today Show the biggest rating of one of the cities in the whole United States. Oh. Today show. Which one's Ben? The one with the good-looking guy with a funny hat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Looks just like Butch. <laughs> uh, I, honestly, at this stage, I'll let you know when I get back on Monday. But anyway, we'll see you. I believe it's too cumbersome. Uh, we'd like to shorten the procedure. I think there's too much paperwork involved in it that uh, involves a lot of the city's time and a lot of the union members' money paying for my salary with unnecessary paperwork. They've already wasted the taxpayers' money on two trials, and they found him innocent or a hung jury. It must be an awful close case, so why spend the taxpayers' money and why spend Don Denman's money to get back down there and have another trial? It seems ridiculous to me. I hope that they'll make some moves during this next session to put some candidates in there that more adequately represent us and to uh, provide perhaps some ethical standards by which to handle these matters. The thing that's been particularly difficult about this one, I think, is that uh, during the period of time that this trial is drug on due to his involvement in the trial, I don't think we've been adequately represented. He's already been acquitted twice. I don't see the point in keep trying him, trying him. I know for a fact that his family's been out a lot of money. years ago it was office buildings and now it's happening to residential construction. More development is taking place than the marketplace can bear. The problem is especially apparent for apartment complexes. Oklahoma City analysts say because of the multi-family glut, requests for building permits are dropping at a steady pace. One city statistician says developers simply started building before doing their homework. The supply far exceeds the demand. We do not have the same uh, migration figures coming into the, uh, into the state and into Oklahoma City itself. Therefore, we do not have enough uh, families to occupy the units. Therefore, the, uh, the uh, number of units that are permitted for construction now are down. The multifamily hotspot is in northwest Oklahoma City, where 3,500 units can be found at a single location. A few investors say they expected to lose some money, but never thought apartment construction would boom overnight. And at least for now, renting new units is expected to be like tearing down a brick wall. Ed Stewart, News 4. There's something to be said for determination, in this case both on the part of Armadillo and Chaser. The idea is to get the scaly creature to the other end of the 40-foot track as quickly as possible. And as you can see, it takes a little pounding in the dirt and screaming to get there. Well, they have hair on them, and when you excite this hair, they'll run. So if you're blowing that hair kind of close to the back, if you get in front of it, well, they'll turn around and run the other way. Now, you've been watching long enough. Have you figured out what the trick is yet? I think it's to try to blow on your legs. This is the damnedest thing I've ever seen. I could stand handle them animals that much. They're kind of scaly. And if you think armadillo races are crazy, there were some wild folks making chili out here today. This is just one of 39 different contestants vying for the prize in a chili cook-off. And the recipes are a well-kept secret. Is that your mascot over there or what? Who, him? No. The oh, that? No, 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 no. That's our scout. Okay. Now, that scout, we send her out every morning. And she circles around, and after she's been circling a while, and she finds some prime cuts. You know, we go out and we get those, and we skin them out, 
You know, we save the skins because, well, the fur, it tickles when you swallow it. We throw the meat in the pot. And then these are the guinea pig judges who will award trophies to the top 10 chilies. Each will be rated on aroma, red color, consistency, taste, and aftertaste. You know, you can't possibly come to an event like this without at least touching an armadillo, but that's as close as I care to get. This has been a great time today, and it's a great cause. All proceeds will go to the Ronald McDonald House and to St. Gregory's College, where they'll spend the money on some special programs for handicapped children. I'm Terry Sutton News Balance of $2,500 was paid this morning, approximately what we call a good faith exception to the exclusionary rule. The evidence would still be admissible at trial. And I'm hoping that probation was financial. The young boy is only 10 years old. Uh, was made contact with the Garland Police Department, made arrangements for them to stage the disappearance of the victim and for them to contact. Uh, Mrs. Martin and let her know that this person had disappeared. And then uh, this morning, our supposed hitman went in to collect the rest of his money and at that time received the additional $2,500 from Mrs. Martin. Yeah, this is the first time I've been on a little site since then. The last time Dan Miller was in the oil patch, the cold winter wind was making his job as a rig hand almost unbearable. It was the day after Christmas, and while Dan was securing some heavy pipe, the platform he was on gave way, leaving him with a badly bruised back and a concussion. The Ada Hospital referred Dan to St. Anthony Hospital in Oklahoma City. But now the oil field worker alleges that's where his real trouble began. Miller says Tom Selby, a male nurse at St. Anthony, came to his room in the middle of the night, disrobed him while he slept, and sexually attacked him. Now Dan says his life has been ruined. I've been having nightmares, and, uh, and I have them every other night. And uh, so uh, I wake up in the morning, and I wake up screaming, and I, I have woke up a few times and seen the man by my bed. And, uh, and when I wake up, I'm kind of in total shock. Miller's attorney, Don Wyatt of Ada, believes St. Anthony Hospital is negligent. The counselor says his client is entitled to $1.8 million in damages. My major concern is the fact that St. Anthony Hospital failed to report this to the police. My client requested it be reported to the police. Uh, the hospital administration, though, chose to handle this matter internally. Administrators at St. Anthony Hospital have been contacted by News 4, but have declined to discuss the lawsuit or Nurse Selby's background. However, the Canadian County Courthouse records show that one Thomas C. Selby was arrested in November of 1981 and charged with first-degree murder. Selby later pleaded guilty to a reduced charge of first-degree manslaughter. He received a five-year suspended sentence. Police records indicate that Selby listed his occupation as a male nurse at St. Anthony Hospital. Kurt Autry, News 4. Avenue and taxation has looked at the same thing from a slightly different... And that particularly... Uh... Uh, would be the, the budget process, but any other issue, but I plan to uh, be aggressive in urging the people. 
Yes. I feel that many times as we move towards a full-time legislature, we are preventing some of our more qualified people from continuing to serve in the legislature or from e even entering it to begin with. And I think that we should reward those good public servants who want to be in the legislature with an opportunity to not be full-time, but to be a citizen legislator. 